Hi, welcome back. You're watching Kolsky RC Chat Time. So I used to have these before when I did the channel and then obviously I stopped doing the channel for quite a long time. So we're back with these. I'm probably only going to do one once every now and then. I was doing them quite often before, but there isn't that much to talk about in enough for me to talk about. First thing to mention is, yes, it is Kolsky RC and not Kolsky 1 anymore. I decided to change the channel name back. I put a quick poll on YouTube yesterday on the community tab and 100% people said they wanted it changed. So we're back. We're back as Kolsky RC and I do prefer it to be honest. So the first thing I want to talk about is the new Mavic Mini 2 or now the DJI Mini 2. You've probably all seen the video now of someone going to Gearbest, picking it up, they shouldn't have sold it him and then it's happened in another store and then he took it home and he's flown it and he showed you loads of features. The only thing about the video that I found a bit strange is I don't know how he flew it on the DJI Fly app because the app doesn't have and certainly didn't have this morning the um, Mini 2 on there. It just had the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Mini. But you might as well use the Mavic Airs because it's hockey sync, so it might as well connect just and I imagine it probably did. So it's got a 4K camera. It has, they reckon, better wind resistance. It's the same weight, but they've knocked the milliamp hour down on the battery. Probably to get the weight in there of the four, with a 4K camera. And it's got OcuSync, which is one of its main features. Whether I'd still want to fly something 249 grams just a couple of miles away, I personally wouldn't. I think it's a local flyer for me, but hey, there's a lot of people out there done long range tests on the Mini before and it looked perfectly great. It needs to be better in wind because in the UK, I still find this drone quite unusable most of the time because I know people say you can fly it in 10 miles. I, I can't, so I don't understand other people are doing it because it's just difficult to get it back there. But it does look fantastic and another major drone out in the market. So I'd imagine the Mini will go and we'll be left with the Mini 2. We'll have then the Mavic Air 2 and that's where we'll be. No competition still. We still have no competition to that drone, so the surprise was to me bringing out the Mini to probably to give it the 4k camera they obviously couldn't do that with software or anything else on that camera on the other camera so i don't know it, to me it didn't really it doesn't make sense doing it when you have no competition but obviously just to keep the market happy so well done dji for that and a new zone is out it's always good in it and just in time for christmas the release dates i don't know i've seen various ones third fifth seventh of November price point I'm hearing 699 for the fly more combo in dollars so I'd imagine that'll probably equate to 699 English pounds so who knows what it's going to be but certainly a major 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 thing for Christmas coming out and if you can actually go buy one because obviously we're in lockdown in the UK as from the 5th again so the second thing I wanted to talk about is Bite Shark, I think it's called, or Shark Bite, one of the two. Um, the new FPV system, digital from um, Fat Shark. I can't remember the name Fat Shark, how strange is that? So this thing is a million times better than the first one from the video I watched of Joshua Bardwell last night. I don't think the video he did was anywhere biased toward um, the unit. I think he was quite honest about it. He did a comparison of range testing it and showing you the breakup it was getting compared to the DJI and the different and the DJI looks better let's be fair let's do it quickly but the DJI looks better but this system is available to put on your goggles so if you own a pair of Fat Shark HDOs or Skyzone O3Os or the um Eoshini 300s which look fantastic or the new Skyzone O4s that are coming out all these have an HDMI port and they're all OLED. But even if you haven't got OLED goggles, you can use them on normal analog goggles, normal screen goggles, as long as it has an HDMI port, because that's all it needs. It needs an HDMI in at the bottom, so this unit is about this size, clips on the front, it's got two uh, patch antennas built into it, and it connects by a HDMI cable into the bottom of your goggles, and that's how it works. You get a air unit type thing, not really an air unit, but I don't know what to call it. So let's call it an air unit from now on. I think it's a 20 by 20 stack or 25 by 25 stack. I can't really remember. And that has a camera coming off the back of it. And there is going to be different cameras. So run cam met the camera that Joshua showed you last night. And also you'd imagine other people are going to make cameras. But as Joshua quite rightly said, I can't see Caddix doing it because they're in bed with DJI. 
So it's future looking great from that point of view if you own a pair of goggles. If you don't own a pair of goggles, then it's still not. If you don't already own a pair of goggles to get into it by the time you bought this unit, the unit on the back of the quad, which is apparently $90, and then you've got $200 for the unit for your goggles, and then don't know what camera costs, but let's say it's 50 you're able to Cadex Vista money, does the same, you can't record on it. Remember, there's no record function on any of it, and that's still there going to be the difference for me. I, I won't be doing it because I fly everything DJI now. If I don't fly, Digital. I have the analog wildfire on the. I have a Foxy wildfire, which is for me. Latency is fine for me. I'm not as good a flyer with a lot of these other people is. Ah, uh, so to say. So that's what I've decided to stick with. I'm very much into DJI, and I'll continue with DJI. Um, even though the video I've got coming up later in the week might say, might have put me off a little bit, but I'm not going to spoil that one for the video that's coming up with some issues that I've had. So the goggles look great. The system, sorry, looks great. If you've got the goggles already, I think it's gonna be great for you because you can just plug and play it. The $250 package that Joshua Spadwell showed you last night, which included the unit itself, the unit for the quad and the run cam camera was $250, but I'm, and that was on GetFPV, but I believe they've all sold out. In the UK, I can't find it anywhere. But it certainly does look good. I like the look of it. It's a much better looking unit. It still looks a bit... Oh, I don't know. If you watch this video, you're going to see the way it fastens on is a bit tacky. It fastens on to the fan mount on the front. So you get a new fan mount for the top of your goggles. And it's got like a tinge kind of thing on there. It doesn't look the best to me. But it does its job and it's far better than the original system they had out. So it's all moving in the right direction. So that's nicely moving on to what I really want to talk about. So I made a video recently saying analog or digital. And with this coming out, oh, I can't see the future for analog goggles. Analog, sorry, flying at all. I think that people have now got the option to put this onto the front of their units. I think more people will actually move over to digital. Even the screen resolution, don't get me wrong, is not as good on the sharp bite as it is on the dji goggles in my opinion anyway i like the big view on the dji goggles but it's still digital and it's still much much better than you were getting on analog and the video quality looks great you need to watch joshua's video if you've not seen it and he'll show you more but yeah it's a great thing for the hobby and the hobby's now moving forward in that direction now because of what's happening in the world, no one seems to mention anything about regulations anymore and all that. So it all seems to have gone quiet, which is quite normal because there's so much other things for everybody to be worrying about the pilots flying in certain designated areas or I don't know, all that garbage. But it seems to have gone all quiet on that front, which is a good thing because let's just fly, let's just go have some fun and let's enjoy the hobby. So the two major things I wanted to talk about was obviously, and, and they are two major things to me. To me, the massive things in the hobby, the Mini that's coming out, Mini 2 coming out, is a groundbreaker for me with that 4K camera under 250 grams. And then the Shark Bite, Bite Shark, I can't remember what it is. It's one of the two is another groundbreaker to me. I didn't think the system would be any cop at all after seeing the first one, but I'm impressed with what I saw last night watching this video. Like I say, for me, it doesn't really matter. So as you've seen, I've got quite a lot of videos on lately and I've got quite a lot coming up in a short period of time because I've had a drone purge. I've went and bought quite a lot of stuff. And one thing that people ask me all the time, and it's constantly questions I get either by email or on me, so it tends to be more by email, is where should I buy a quad from? And that's a difficult one to answer. So as much as I have issues with Banggood, I still buy from them because of the fact I can save a hundred pounds, maybe more, on certain things. Having said that, if I can buy from the UK, I do. The Nazgul HD that I did recently, I did buy that from a man tech because it was only twenty pound difference from buying it from Banggood, and I got it course the next day. I bought it on paid six pound ninety nine post and got it next day because I'm impatient. But there was only a little bit of difference. I buy my motors, frames. Stacks from the UK from Unmanned Tech. I tend to just use Unmanned Tech, but I also use Flying Tech for certain things. And the Drone Authority is another company I use for certain things. So there's quite a few people in the UK about. I tend not to use quadcopters.co.uk because they never think to have anything in stock. 
So it's tends to be them three, normally on Mantec. So if you're buying, if you want to buy a drone, you can buy the drone from Mantec. You can buy virtually everything. Those, when I say everything, they sell 10 to say the latest and greatest of stuff coming out. But to use a big example, I've just bought the iFlight Camera 7 inch HD, the one with, and it had everything on it, and it was 396 on Banggood. I used to, I found a discount code because you always can kind to get 10% off, so it came in about 360 delivered, but it was 467 on a man tech site. There, and uh, as much as I want to buy British, I'm not going to spend a hundred pounds, so you have to then buy from Banggood. Just be aware, you're guaranteed a bit up in the air, you will have to return the drone. If it's got an issue, you'll have to return it to the Banggood. They will check it over and then they will refund it if they find fit. If it's something minor on the quad and you can fix it yourself and they offer you some money in compensation, you, and it's more than enough to fix a quad, just do that because you're going to save yourself a whole lot of heartache. I've been there, trust me, I've fought the fight with Banggood. And can you win? Probably not. So that's the end of this. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Don't forget, like, share and subscribe, but most of all, stay safe. Thanks for watching my channel. If you like the video, please subscribe and hit the like button and also hit that notification bell. There's plenty more good stuff coming up.